Okay guys, um, we're going to delve into some model making now. Um, we're going to start by making some primitive shapes, looking at how we make and create those, um, and how we can use them to create some basic 3D models. Um, you'll notice right here, we have a flyout by clicking, left clicking that little bottom corner. Um, that comes out and shows us a bunch of different primitives. Uh, we're going to have a look at those now. Um, we've already looked at the cube, so just briefly click the first point, click the second point, choose the height. Again, you can create a cube or a rectangular prism. Um, all left clicks, and you'll notice that you've created your first three dimensional shape. Um, okay, so let's move on from the rectangular prism and let's start looking at what's next. Uh, next up, we have a cylinder. Again, uh, when you hover your mouse over, you'll notice that it comes up with a little drop-down menu. Um, and before we do that, we're actually going to look at a nice little feature of uh, Rhino, which is the help options. So if it doesn't show up here, in the right-hand panel, um, we can just see it here. Help and help topics. Um, you can see here you get a whole lot of um, uh, different sort of uh, information that you can look through about all the different sort of uh, finer points of Rhino. Um, or we can go, uh, let's look here, you got tutorials on the web, FAQs, um, command help, that's what we want. Okay, so you notice that this little option comes up, this little pop out window, we're going to dock that over here, I'm going to drag that over. So to do that again, left mouse click and hold, uh, pull it over here. Okay, now that's docked. Um, you can keep that open if that helps you. And what that'll do is it'll actually come up with uh, instructions on every tool you open. So um, we'll see that when we click on the cylinder tool, it opens up a help window that shows us all about making cylinders. Um, it's got a little video, um, tells us the step-by-step -step options, etc. So if you ever get stuck, remember that help option is always there. Um, it's very important when you start out just to make sure you're reading everything carefully, um, always being aware of what the command line is asking you, um, so you know what um, what step you need to do. Um, Rhino is very methodical, so um, you need to complete each step before moving on to the next step. And if you if you're sort of unaware of what you're meant to do, it can get a bit confusing. Okay, so to create a cylinder. Um, we have the first point, which will be the center of our cylinder. Again, um, always wanting to build on that zero, zero point. Um, to do that, we can either click on it, making sure we have grid snap turned on, or we can uh, just type in zero, comma, zero. Next option we have is the size of the cylinder. You'll notice up here we have some options. Um, so at the moment, it's set to uh, radius. Um, and if we click over, it'll change. So um, if I type in 10, that's created a cylinder with a diameter of 10 millimeters. Again, 5 plus 5 is 10, where my cursor is. Um, so I'll go ahead and delete that. I'll create another one, and I'll show you the different options. The cylinder here, um, and this is a little bit confusing. So when it says radius, what you're typing in is the diameter. The reason it says radius here uh, is to switch over to radius um, when you type a dimension in. For example, if I click radius now, and I'm going to type 10 again, so just one zero on my keyboard, you'll see that comes up in the command line. I'll hit enter, and I'll check, do my height uh, of my cylinder. Again, it's nominal, I'm going to type 10 again. Uh, what you'll notice in I now, is I now have a cylinder with a diameter of 20 millimeters, so negative 10 to positive 10 equals 20, and a radius of 10. So that that can be a little bit confusing, but um, you'll sort of know straight away that if you click the wrong option, you can just delete it and start again. Um, so we have a cylinder. I'm just going to move that over by clicking it, making sure I have gumball on, and dragging that to the right. Okay. Next object we have is a sphere. So again we have some options with the sphere. Um, uh, we're going to start in the center point again. 
going to drag out again at the moment it says diameter so therefore if I type in it's going to be the radius um, uh, we can also enter a circumference if that's relevant to what you're doing if you need a circle with a specific circumference or a specific area um, again generally you're just working with a diameter or radius so this time I'll type in 20 and you'll notice that that completes a sphere you don't need any other inputs so that's bigger than the cylinder. It's got a radius of 20 instead of 10. Okay, I'm going to move that across to my left this time. Uh, we're going to go through again. Uh, this time we'll create an ellipsoid. Uh, this is sort of just like a squashed sphere. Or an elliptical or oval sphere. So a few more inputs on this one. We're going to start at 0, 0 again. So 0, comma 0. I've typed that on my keyboard. Hit enter. Okay. So it ellipse, uh, as some of you may or may not know, has a number of axes. Uh, this is the first one. Or we'll click. And you'll see once we've done that, which is uh, specified the length or width of the ellipse, we can enter another thing for the height. So in this case, I'm going to just type 10 there. And then if we go into our front or right views, we can specify it. Oops, I didn't click. Sorry, click. And now you can see if we go into our front or right views, uh, we can specify the height of the ellipse. In this case, I'm going to do it 5. Hit 5 and press Enter. And you can see we've created a sort of football shape. Um, again, very accurate. We know the, all the dimensions. We can see them on the grid lines. Um, and once you've done that, you can move that across. Okay. Now uh, we'll continue through. We can create a uh, cone. Um, again, we have a number of different ellipses. You can see here um, the drop-down menu, ellipsoid by diameter from Foki, um, around a curve. So these are just different ways to create ellipses. So we don't need to look at those right now, but just be aware that if you have an ellipsoid that you need for a specific application, there, there could be a solution just here. Same with the uh, sphere. Okay, we're going to look at our cones now. Again, cones are sort of built like cylinders. We'll specify a base. Again, I'm just doing it by eye now. Once you've selected that diameter, you'll move down to your front view. I'm just panning up by holding my right mouse button and moving up to create the point of the cone. Once that's done, you'll see that you have a cone. Okay. Uh, next up, we have a pyramid or a truncated cone. We'll have a look at that. Uh, similar deal here. Left click, left click. I'm going to pull up to make a cone just like before. But this time we have another option of flattening out the top. And that's what a truncated cone is. So um, again, moving your mouse into the different viewports will give you a different sort of view, a way to control that. Um, in this case, you probably either want to use the top or the front. Um, remembering you can always type in dimensions, say 2, uh, for example. Created a small um, flat topped cone. Uh, what do we have next? We're going to do a pyramid again. So uh, we have some more options with the pyramid. Um, we can choose the number of sides of the pyramid. So if we just click num sides there, and I'm going to type in 8. Sorry, eight. Um, you have some more options here. You can make it a star if you want. Um, you see there, it's created a star shape that's going to pull out just like a cone. Um, if I didn't have, so I'll undo that, move that to the left. Again, I'm going to right click to get back into the tool. So just right click in any window. I'm going to get rid of it being a star this time but by clicking star again. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. Just don't, I'm just not going to click star. Um, I'm going to make it six sided this time. Right click to accept. So once I click num sides, I'll type five or six or whatever and right click to accept that or hit enter. Okay. Now you can see I'm just creating a regular five sided pyramid there. Okay. What next? We have a tube. 
very similar to a cylinder here. First we're going to set our uh, outside diameter, then our inside diameter, and then that's going to come out. Um, generally pulling out objects like that from a flat plane, so we're starting with a flat shape and then pulling it out to create a three-dimensional shape is known as extruding. Um, you may be familiar with the term um, generally used in manufacturing to refer to some sort of material being pushed through a form, just like um, sort of toothpaste extrudes out of the nozzle into the shape of a cylinder. Um, similarly, we're just extruding shapes that we've uh, predetermined their uh, two-dimensional form. Um, okay. Uh, we have a torus, which is just like the shape of a donut. Again, we're going to set the diameter, and then we're going to set the size of the torus. So you can see here, we have a donut. Um, we have a pipe here. Uh, for that, we need a curve, so we'll leave that one for now. Uh, and that's fine, that's all we need in terms of these primitive shapes. Okay, cool. Um, so from here, we're going to look at moving these accurately. Um, and what we're going to build is a small little house. So um, these are some more selection options here. Um, so if I want to select all of these objects um, to delete them, instead of clicking one by one, oops, I'm in a tool, just go, instead of clicking one by one, um, I can do this in a couple of ways. Um, I can hit edit, select objects, and I can select all objects. Um, shortcut control A. So I hit control A, they all select. Um, alternatively, um, I can click and drag my mouse around them, um, and that'll select them as well. So a little lasso comes up. Um, you'll notice that if you do the selection, so let's look at this as an example, I'm dragging here from right to left, um, so that little lasso rectangle, anything that that touches it will select. If I lasso from uh, left to right, it doesn't select it. Left to right, it has to be fully enclosed by the lasso. Right to left, it only has to be touching. Um, it just may be something that you notice and you're not sure why. Um, it's just when you're selecting multiple parts or complex objects, it can be handy. Um, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, drag a lasso over all of these and hit delete.